What's up, y'all? Just wanted to remind you that every episode of The Crunchy Take is available on Spotify, YouTube, Radio Public, and Google Podcasts. So be sure to check us out on those platforms by typing in The Crunchy Take on the search bar. Now, if you'd like to participate in the show or would like to suggest topics for me or my guests to cover, the best way to do so would be to send us a voice message at anchor.fm slash james kittipole slash message. That's anchor.fm slash james kittipole that's K-I-T-T-I-P-O-L, slash message. It's my sincere hope that wherever you may be, that you have found peace and comfort of some kind amidst a time of significant, significant hardship. Thank you very much for stopping by and enjoy the podcast. And now, welcome to another round of the Crunchy Take, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. Um, this week, we're here to talk about what's become a sad thing. It's the last of the last of the last of the last dance. Real big sad. And today, of course, I'm joined by good friend as usual, longtime big brother slash jokester. Eric Lewingraf, DJ Primetime. How's it going, brother? Uh, hey, not bad. Hey, hell, hell of an intro, man. Jeez. I, I feel like I was uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame or something. You're, 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 you're really doing a good job with that now. My goodness. You know, we only, um, I only, I spend about a good two to three minutes thinking about it prior. And whatever comes oh. to mind comes to mind. And what I was thinking about two to three minutes minutes before we started pressing the record button i, mm. I i'm reiterating absolutely no, none of it <laughs> sometimes the a best lot of brain plan, farts yeah sometimes the best plan is no plan okay i'll tell you that sometimes the best plan is to just time jump and do Correct. a bunch of whirly whirlies and dirly dirlies like the last dance did um oh, 10 yeah. episodes of it we got oh. and the last two aired last night, which means next Sunday is going to be a giant void for a lot of basketball fans and a lot of maybe sports fans who have, uh, who have watched and uh, kept up. And a, lot of, and a lot of older people. <laughs> yeah, a lot of older people. We'll get to that in a little bit where ESPN uh, did a poll about two or three weeks ago just comparing the inevitable, this inevitable argument that they keep going back to between LeBron James and uh jordan we'll get to that in a little bit i got some stats there that might surprise oh, we'll you get that to might... that yeah we'll get to that but first eric what you yes. make of the last two episodes uh before i want to before i get into it i we gotta we gotta give a quick shout out to our probably our only loyal listener uh tom uh <laughs> listens to us consistently and uh tom we know you're listening we just want to say thank you for supporting Absolutely. thank you for being our one and only for now hopefully <laughs> Tom, I do want to say if I'm back in the Bay Area one day, I do want to. I got some. I got some cigars coming your way, man. That's all I gotta say. I, I don't do the. I don't oh. do that. Devil's lettuce, but I, anything else? No or, devil's lettuce, huh? No devil's. No lettuce, devil's lettuce, not, but you got some not cigars. For not for me. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we're cigars gonna get that. And, oh, let's get that nicotine hitter, man. That nicotine good Jordan, hitter. That good Jordan uh, cigar action. Well, speaking yeah. of cigars, cigar season, yes. champagne season. Eric, what do you think of the last dance, man? What do you think of these last? It was episodes? nothing short of amazing. This is why it's good to have to not have a like an intricate, deep knowledge of how filming and whatnot works. You know, I'm very just happy go lucky about whatever. But I thought it was uh, sensational to say the very least. You know, but from like a film critic standpoint, I don't know what I don't know what the. It was amazing. Oh, I mean, tell me, what, yeah, tell me what you um. What felt different about these two last episodes? Because to me, they really did feel different. I, I, you know, I posted on Facebook last night saying that it was, I think they, they saved, they clearly saved the best two for last. You know? Yeah. I, that was so funny. You, you, you were frustrated with the, the constant time, time machine things. They still kind of did it, but I think it was mostly just between 97 and 98, right? You know, like the, the two seasons. Yeah. Like those two seasons. I mean, <sighs> What do you mean different? Give me your take, because yeah, give me your well, take on that I, on how think, it felt different. I guess I can start with what I liked. Um, the reason I say these last two really felt different is because you could very well tell that they 
we've come to the end of our race, right? We've come to we've come to the last dance, hence the title. Yes. You know, Jordan yes. even says it throughout the documentary. And um you could very well tell that the pacing of the documentary uh, was ramped up in the edit. You know, the edit really magnified the intensity of the moment. You know, yeah. the fir- the last what, episode 9 started off with that series against the Pacers, which I think, bar none, might be the best offensive back and forth and an all-round matchup that Jordan had between um, with any other opponent. You might say the Detroit yeah. Pistons just because of overcoming the hump, but I feel like that's a great place for them to start. That, that oh man, dude, that, that Pacers team was tough. That was a good. They were a that was damn a good team. Good team. Who yeah. did they have? They had. They had Miller. They had. Uh, they had Chris Mullins. They had. Chris Rose, Mullins. Jalen uh, Rose. Mark Jackson. Jalen Rose. Yeah, because Jalen Rose was kind of like that. He was kind of the. He was like one of those, you know, like taller point guards, like that taller type. Yeah, Mark guard, Jackson. Also, Mark tough. Jackson. He came over from New York, didn't he? Mark Jackson. Yeah. Yes, and this is like they had a the the Pacers and the Knicks had a heated rivalry throughout Absolutely. you know in the mid in the mid 90s and then th- that was such a big deal at the time when Mark Jackson, you know, got, you know, he got traded to Indiana. It was a 30 for 30 about that on on them and uh, him, right? just between him yeah, and Sp- Reggie it's, Miller it's, and Spike uh, Lee yeah, with the whole choke sign. Yeah, it, it's it's more of a Reggie Miller versus the New York Knicks kind of a documentary. It, it's yeah, it's a great it's that's another Very good one too. Think about the framing of that just a little bit. That's, a, that's an interesting kind of geographical um, conflict between two metropolises that otherwise have nothing to do with each other. Yeah. You know, two very, very different, you know, Indiana, it's like, you know, it's Indiana. And New York yeah. is <laughs> this I, big I, old I, metropolis. I caught, I caught one miss. Uh, it, was like a, it was like a wrong... It was a wrong timing thing, but I caught it in the documentary because Michael Jordan, he kept saying, oh, well, you know, whatever, you know, you win or whatnot. You still got to come to Chicago. Remember? You remember that one point where he was like, you still got to yep. come to Chicago. That Very was calm, before. Stoic. Everything. That was after. Um, that was actually after game six. Yeah. But they played that. They played that after like game five or something. The, I think the game. that was. Oh, man, that was crazy. R- r- the, the, that shot where R- Reggie Miller shoved Michael Jordan. Okay, what do you think of that first? Because I was watching with a friend last night, and he said that's very clearly, um, clearly a shove. But to me, it's like no, I, I don't mm, think so. No, that was that was definitely clearly, clearly a sh- sh- um, shove. A shove. Off? But th- this is this is being, you know, being a Michael Jordan fan, you know, being a kid, Michael Jordan fan in the '90s. Anything yeah. that could be against Michael Jordan, I, I you know, I, I rooted for him. So I was, of course, I thought it was a shrug. Yeah, but at, and by I remember that same token. Yeah, go ahead. I just remember that game too because Michael Jordan still had a chance to win the game. Did you see how close that shot was? Even though it was a big oh, shot, man. I, I it was remember so close, it I from um, from MJ to the max. They have that slow mo, yeah. that beautiful slow mo thing of the ball just rolling in the air. We were accustomed to seeing Jordan make that shot. Over, yeah, because you're 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 again. just it doesn't matter. You're not safe, you know, with it Michael Jordan. So but yeah, that was that was so a, Reggie Miller was. As uh, what was it? As Stephen A. would say, Reggie Miller's a bad man. <laughs> is that the only um okay well before i get to that it, i think i don't think it was a shove okay in today's nba it very clearly be a shove right <clears throat> yeah but you have to take into context a bunch of things like well not a bunch but jordan is jordan the reps at the he has a really he's cultivated a pretty interesting kind of way of getting what he wants you know there's, oh, yeah. there's footage they didn't really show of him talking to reps or if they did i don't really remember it but they um yeah yeah so he's the star so you'd think he'd get the call but i think the reason he didn't get the call um was because he didn't sell the contact he didn't flip over he didn't you know flop <laughs> like a lot of yeah players i mean today it, it's you know? it's hard to you know like in, in a in a stressful you know tense situation like that yeah. you're the, the game is on the line and the flop could just be a bad like just a bad gamble you know you could leave also, him even more open yeah, I, I don't think Jordan is the type to do that. That's that's why a lot of people consider him like just a different, <clears throat> or people of that elk to be different. You know, whereas I think yeah. Dennis would have flopped. Dennis would have found a way to like accentuate the. He would have found a way to get under, uh, under Reggie's skin, which is why 
fascinating that Reggie or Scotty didn't, uh, or I'm sorry, Rodman or Scotty didn't defend him. I thought it was cool that Michael took that upon himself to do it. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's also another difference in when you, you know, have the greatest of all time conversation. Like he, Jordan guarded the best offensive player too, you know? Yeah. Um, what, what, what's funny about this is, is we learned that Reggie Miller actually did that as, that was a gamble himself too, the shove. He, was, he wasn't even yeah. sure if he can get away with it, but he did, you know? So that was kind of cool. That was kind of a cool little surprise. You have to take gambles like that when you're going up against grades. The way that that's you respect rough, them, the way that you gamble, respect though, them is to go at them balls hard, you know? Balls hard? I don't know if I ever said hard, that, dude. but hey. But uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't think ball- Okay, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, you know, we're given that series as a starting point, um, which I feel... You know, in, in the trailers leading up to the air date, that's the tone uh. and intensity that was set. You know, just that whole 1998 season. Um, and my last bit before I go into things I like about it. I just wish, <laughs> yeah. you know, I think they could, they might have done better by just making it shorter. Maybe, maybe make, making it five parts or making oh, it dude. one long continuous, like two hours intense. James, that's Only rough. 1997, that's rough to say, man. 1998 season. Or just the 90s. You know, because we know the backstory of Jordan at this point. We know, like, yeah. various things, you know. But it's you... cool that they patched in different... I- I'll leave it at that. It might have okay. been better if the time frame was short- shortened. But I do appreciate just the footage that they went... The lengths that they get went to to get the footage that they did. You know, everything from Phil Jackson freaking coaching in Argentina. Or, sorry. Or yes. Like, Wherever. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, seeing all that. You know, or just different news broadcasts that aren't yeah. brought to light, you know. I, I don't know, dude. I might have to slightly disagree with that. I, I would be okay with 10 more episodes like that. The only reason why is because Michael Jordan doesn't do this that kind of stuff. He was, yeah. would you say Michael Jordan was interviewed the most? You know what I mean? Like, he had as to, far as inter- he had to. As far as interview footage, finally, he was willing to open up and let this happen tell his story yeah. so dude if we can get if we can get 10 more episodes of footage like that i'll take it but that's just yeah. you know being a being a greedy selfish fan but i mean oh, 10 was good I, I don't yeah that's stuff that i like because jordan is a very <clears throat> we've come to learn now he's he's actually a pretty reserved and kind of you know to himself man when he's not in the general public you yes know, when yes. he's not in the public eye but when he is in the public eye it's almost like this is it's funny in a sense that now it's because there's no basketball going on, given the circumstance, it kind of heightens everything up. And he's, oh, he, he is constantly, in the it, spotlight. it was, I, I can't imagine it, yeah. that he likes that a whole lot right, <laughs> right now. I, what, 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 when was this supposed to come out in June? This was supposed to come out a little or during, I think it was supposed to come out after the finals or around the time oh. that the finals were supposed to start. And that would have been Jeez. an incredible kind of companion piece um, to come along. Um, it, it, yeah. It's just what a what perfect like this is just a perfect, perfect timing. Yeah, perfect. Everything like the, the, the way it went down, you know, it, it's just like it's kind of like the, you know, like the the Corona MVP, you know, like that with, you know, Tiger King coming in second, but that's another conversation for another time. (laughs) Well, now I I definitely feel like Tiger King has been put in as far as ratings go, because Tiger King isn't nearly as long. Right. But then you got, you got Tiger King would have about it. Tiger King would have been a hit no matter what, but it was obviously it's, it's heightened and exponentiated because we're, we're in self quarantine, but where you have something like the last dance, which, which was a, very well put together no matter when you watch it at what time at what point the world is at yeah like that to to have that quality of product exponentiated mm-hmm. also is, is is what made it uh even better but yeah yeah okay so going into things that i liked i going yes. back to the pacing <clears throat> um you know i said how i didn't like t- time jumping or whatnot but with these last two i just felt like the time jumping was very well implemented you know mm. these last two episodes it, yeah were you remember what i was saying about when ken burns was saying this was in good journal good journalism what what this past one was in my opinion 
These past okay. two were. And the reason was is because the time jumping did not detract from the storyline that was taking place. Uh, one very key example of that that I freaking loved, I loved that they put it in, was um, the bit about Steve Kerr and his father. Yes. Um, yeah. So Steve I, I love because because yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. What was your segment? Okay, it, it, it'll be quick. But remember, mm-hmm. in the beginning, you're getting little snippets of it's almost like a mini documentary in the documentary of us mm-hmm. of players. Remember, it was it was Michael Jordan, then it was Scotty. Episode three was Rodman. Mm-hmm. I liked how they kind of took it back to that, or this is how I felt at least. They took yeah. us back to that mini, you know, documentary within a documentary, and they they had that little Steve Kerr yeah. segment. Yeah, it was it was great. But yeah. No, it's great because Steve Kerr, he, people, what a lot of people don't know. I mean, I only just discovered his, his father's tragic backstory about a month and yeah. a half ago. I was just reading about it. Wait, really? Dude, I, I didn't even know until I saw it. Yeah, until, until I saw the documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a Professor Kerr, who uh, taught from UCLA, and for those of you who don't know, it's, um, yeah, he went over to Beirut to try to form that kind of international liaison between you know to kind of be an ambassador which is yes. a very 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 dangerous thing to do a dangerous brave period. thing to do yeah <clears throat> it was it was i mean the news reporter flat out came out and said it's not a good place to be as an american yep so you have to wonder what's going through your mind as a wife or as a son seeing your dad yeah. go off and just you know you pursuing your own career and um i always thought that was a relatability factor between him and michael you know Yes, but the fact that they never talked about it made it even more interesting for me. Is because they kept that sacred. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't cross the line because it could have very easily been something very uncomfortable. Because we're with Steve Kerr's father being killed, that's almost delving in, that's delving into some political kind of thing. You yes, know? but I like that Steve. He was very emotional about it. Did you notice? Like just oh yeah, yeah. and it's I don't know, man. Like. I almost put more value to people breaking down in front of the camera more so than just like regular life. Because I think you can, I, I don't know. I, mm-hmm. I, I think it's probably when you know that it's being documented, you know, you're being seen. I think I, I would think it's harder to mm-hmm. get that emotional to, to the point of tears or whatnot. But that's why if you see it in a documentary, I, I think there's, it means a little bit more, you know, kind of like last time when Michael Jordan was talking about his obsession and the way that he treated his teammates. And then he kind of got, you know, he had to take a break. Remember? He, he, Cause he got emotional. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was, yeah, I definitely noticed that. Talk about just that. That's just, um, just the stain and the mark that that will have on your memory for the rest of your life. It, you kind of see it on Steve's face, wherever he goes, you know, he still looks, I was, you know, I was watching yesterday and, you know, at the end where they're making um, you know, that 97 parade or whatnot, where Steve's saying, where Steve's mm, making that's hilarious. Yeah. I guess I got to bail Michael out again. But you see that weight on his face and he still looks the same today. It's almost yeah. like he hasn't aged a day other than his, phys- his physique. His mentality yeah. is still maintained the same. You have to wonder at some point, when did that like toughen up? You know, mm-hmm. when, when, when did that callous factor become a thing? And that, that probably was the trigger right there. Um, no, but it, but then that made seeing him make each shot. It felt so good to see him make these hard or these shots. You know, just like, yeah. It was kind of like what you're saying, where this is a mini documentary within the documentary, and I feel like these last two or number nine really it made it highlighted Steve Kerr in, in my opinion. Yes, yes, it validated him. Well, I mean. Um, we not him. validated he's, him, but Jordan said, you know, he gave him his wings. <laughs> he earned his wings. Uh, yeah. That's a hell of a compliment. That is a it hell is a hell of a compliment. Hell of a compliment. And also, like, the reason why Steve Kerr earned his respect, earned Michael Jordan's respect, was because he kind of didn't back. I mean, he was going to get his ass whooped, but he never backed down from a muscle, you know? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, you earn people's respect like that. <clears throat> and it's just cool to see the lens of. And see, that's what I'm talking about. They, they took his father's tragic backstory then right at the end of that segment he talks about hearing the anthem or whatnot and what it means to him and then yes. you fast forward to that finals and it's just a close-up on his face that's what i'm looking for it's yes. not hard, you know but it's you know just shots like that that kind of take us back you know um yeah when when they can make it when it when it's not 
when basketball is the last thing that the maybe a certain part of the documentary is about, you know, that's yeah. when, it, yeah, that's when it's good. When, you know, when basketball is like the take, takes the back seat mm-hmm. and all the politics or the story behind it is what takes over. Yeah, yeah. definitely. What's another part that you liked? I mean, geez, I mean, I, I, I can't. Name it's kind of like, like asking like, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? There's, there's uh, so much. Yeah. But I have little snippets of notes here. Uh, what do you make of Dennis just going off and being with Hulk Hogan for a little bit and just doing that, that thing was, that he uh, did First of all, that was amazing. I remember it's that. He went to WCW, too. and I'm a, I'm a huge pro wrestling fan, so I was all about it. But when you're, when you're young, you don't understand that, hey, you need to, like, if you have a – if you're great at a profession, you got to kind of focus your energy on that. But also, that might have helped Dennis too. He needs to be out there and do his thing. He performs during the That's game. So He'll funny. perform. I thought what was funnier was the whole media outburst about it. Did you notice that? Um, it was kind of like they they didn't. It's like Dennis hasn't changed within the past two or three years that you've he's been in that spotlight, or however long he's been in that spotlight. And the last time yeah. he took a break, it's exactly the same thing. Okay, but now this may have been. I think, I think when he, bit, I think but. when he took a break, the, when he went to Vegas, I don't think people knew about that except the team. Oh, but oh, but the okay. So you're you're saying the difference is the spotlight was bigger the second time well, he did it. It's it's not it's not just that. It's also like any 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 press is good press. It's like it doesn't. Like it's just they're just looking for a story, you know. One of the funnier points in the doc was seeing him just like try to, or seeing the Bulls administration slash security team. Try to move him to a point where he could just bolt to mm. bolt away from the, the press. Do you remember that? Oh, wait, wait, say, say, say it again. To so, what? You know, there was a lot of press trying to get uh-huh. in and try to trying to like, you know, trying to do their bit and trying to get any oh, snippet yeah. of Dennis that they could. And here's this guy. There's this one administ- uh Bulls like team slash worker you know he was employee there he's just talking about okay so we got these three entrances we're gonna try to sneak dennis around so that he can yeah. get bolt you know yeah, yeah you just yeah. see dennis like it was all, me and my me and my guy we were just almost saying run 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 and dennis booked it you know he mm-hmm. just he just took off and it's funny he didn't yeah. even get on the truck he, he didn't even get on the bus he i think he got on that pickup truck and <laughs> just like yeah but the off. one that was like the one that was close to the exit or whatever yeah the one that was right in front of the bus he just like, took off yeah Dude, uh, this is uh, it's kind of random. I, I was gonna end with this like later on, but I'll just talk about it now. A- as far as a legacy, you you would you want a legacy like someone like you know as far in a sport you want a legacy like Michael Jordan. You want a legacy like you know uh, whoever name any great athlete. But as far as like a life, I would love I would choose the life of Dennis Rodman in a heartbeat. That dude lived a hell of a life. <laughs> He's lived a hell of a life everywhere. He's been the, he's been everywhere you can think. Yeah, of. If, if you're talking about variety, you know, in in what he's done, he's, he's been to places he, he, most Americans would not dream of going. He's he's lived the greatest life ever. But yeah, that's yeah. just uh, yeah. I just also um, I it kind I kind of unpacked this yesterday watching it. What a damn uh-huh. good coach Phil Jackson is. I think that'd be the camel that breaks a lot that breaks. Other teams, yeah, oh, not the camel that breaks other teams. God damn it, the straw he, that breaks the camel's back for most yes. teams trying to overcome the bulls. You know, as we talk about matchups, but Phil, just like, what are you gonna do when that kind of coach is plotting against you? Yeah, you know, and he has the greatest player in the world. It's and, see, it's even harder. Like you would think it's easier because you have all these great players, but to manage them and to know their egos and to know how to. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's another that's something you can't really. He was just so you know. methodical. Like, um, and it, it it wasn't even a huge play that he drew up or whatnot. It was just the real time in game adjustments that the guy made. Yeah. Like there was this, I don't know. It was it was in, it was a timeout, and he was talking to his team. I was like, man, we talk about these matchups all the time. You know what what matchups would you like to see? You know, Heat versus Bulls or Warriors yeah. versus Bulls. It's just like that's one hurdle I'd never thought about. Was the coaching yeah. philosophy different? Yeah, like Steve and, Kerr and all these Phil picks, Jackson. all these teams that we can think of, seventy five percent of them were coached by Phil Jackson. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Oh, and the other thing, what a great, um, what a great framing that uh, Indiana series was. 
you got Larry Bird coaching against you. Oh, yeah. Larry Bird, yeah. I remember that when he was a coach. When uh, Reggie made that shot, his face just still. I'm so glad that they they showed that footage. I mean, we've seen that footage over and over again, but I'm glad that they added that to the documentary as well because Larry Bird, who has done it so many times his whole career, (laughs) he just like, he just expected it. And when it happened, he's just like, okay, well, you were supposed to do that. You know, I've done it all, you know. So that, that, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's just like his still face knowing, oh, wait, there's still time in the clock, meaning Jordan yeah. can still put up a shot, you know? Yes. I mean, it's... <clears throat> I, I, don't, I don't peg Larry Bird for being overly complimentary or anything. He's pretty, you know, do your job, pale bucket, and a blue collar. Yeah. He had that kind I mean, of mentality. I mean, he's, he's the same way, too. Like, if he does a good... Yeah. You know, he's not looking for a praise, you know. But he called Michael Jordan God disguised as, like... Uh, yeah, he looked like he was God disguised as Michael Jordan, yeah. Pretty insane, dude. In that insane um, series where, where Michael Jordan... Michael Jordan still has the record for points in a playoff game, 63 points. Another thing I liked was the... Yes. Um, bit about the security guards. I, I like, see, it, the little mini stories that come from these... Um, you know, from having an uh, a camera crew that has unfiltered access, it's stuff yes. like that that I want to see. You know, we we got snippets of it throughout where he you know, he was competing with the guards, but that thing with Gus was just very. I don't know. It was, it was heartwarming. You know. Yeah, I mean, you, you need that. You need someone like that because someone mm-hmm. who can filter out or know, you know, who to who to let in or mm-hmm. you know to be that, yeah, to be that person or you know whatever his role was. Yeah. It's just that we all need a gust, man. Him having that, <laughs> him having that, uh, I don't know, chemo when he came back and Jordan did for him, gave him the game ball. That's pretty cool. And, um, yes, just, uh, yeah, you have to imagine that these security guards and the personnel at the Bulls, they're probably, they can probably say things to him that fam- even family can't. You know? Yeah. They can nail, they can tell him the truth, the un, you know, unfact, unfiltered truth. Yeah. You no. Know? People what like that. Honor, uh, like like to, to be to be working there, or like to to have a to know Michael Jordan. You know, semi semi personally, just because you see him all the time. You know, you like yeah. just a few the the conversations you strike with every here and there. Must be, must be great. What strikes me as a little odd though is how frail those men are. Um, what? Because <laughs> if you go to if you go to an NBA game now, and if you try to cover an NBA game now, yes. Yeah. Those guards are huge. Oh yeah, they're big and fat and really just like they're like bouncer type oh, yeah. material, and they're oh, major yeah. assholes. I'm sorry, they're they're major dicks, you know, and they have well, to be a, because of all as the. As should be, yeah. Yeah, they have to be to uh, to other people, but I just felt like that crew. I don't know. It, it was a good spotlight to me. Yeah. Just seeing how things were done, maybe a little differently before. It wasn't so much the physique factor; it was more the relatability. Yes. Um, although I'm pretty sure if you asked an NBA player now, of course they probably have some kind of relationship with the personnel there. It's not like it's not 100% kind of divaism, you think? Yeah, but it, it's all. I mean, it's just cool. To, it's also just cool to see because this is something yeah. we haven't seen before. You know, because like I'm, uh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure just... Steph like knows a good chunk of whoever used to yeah. work at Oracle, and I'm pretty sure they all get nice little Chase Christmas Center. gifts from the players too. You know. <laughs> Hey, speaking of that, yes. Um, that'll, uh, no, that that'll come at the end. Um, <laughs> all right, sorry. Sure. Going back to, uh, I, I thought another thing that they captured really well was the environment of the games that were being played, especially in Salt Lake. Um, oh yeah, Salt Lake City, Utah. Just like, I mean, we all think about that photo where he takes the last shot, right? And you just see the faces yes. of every oh, yes. single person knowing it's about to go in, but. Yes. I know, they, there's this one uh, shot of that lady just, I don't know, you remember, right? That, uh, what some people in the hood may call, th- this, this one Karen just streaming in your, in your effing oh, face. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, oh, a lot of that. Karens in Utah, a lot all of Karens All of that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to anybody named Karen out there, but it, it's, um, <laughs> and it just made me think about, damn, they, the Midwest really doesn't go for the NBA like that anymore. What do you mean? You know, because it's when I first came out here, you know, in Indiana to study, I thought people were all about, you know, this is basketball city, basketball country. 
Yeah, people they got, could hardly yeah, give they, a they got rats, the teams. Yeah, people could hardly give a rat's ass about the NBA now, especially. It's just the energy isn't there as it used to be. I don't know. And it made me think tickets were expensive back then, weren't they? Twenty five years ago, it's not that different, right? They tickets were uh, hard to n- get. Uh, right? It's. I mean, if it's a Bulls game, yeah, they sell out, but tickets are were not as expensive. Of course, not. think of where you are economically right now. Okay, now mm-hmm. take yourself back to the 1990s would you have been able to to go to a finals game right now oh a finals game oh geez no you as yourself right now you're you're adultful you're able to go to a 90s finals game or a playoff game i mean maybe like maybe like one playoff game or something yeah yeah maybe whereas now it's just i think it's so it's become so corporate you don't get that visceral rawness that you still uh, accompany yeah, these, that is true. these games. Because, I mean, if you think about it, dude, like the first, maybe the first five rows all throughout an arena, especially a yeah. place like Oracle Arena, or not Oracle, I'm sorry, uh, Chase Center. Those are all yeah. bought out by corporate accounts, for sure. They're, they're all bought out by corporate accounts, and you don't get like the, you have to understand, those tickets are expensive, man. They, yeah. they cost so much. And you would think the person paying them, like, I don't know. Back then, it, it it felt like they let it go a lot more. It felt like <clears throat> the people that were sitting in the first five rows or in the in the first level felt like the people that usually sit at the back levels nowadays. You know? Yes. You, know? you want you want to go if you want some characters, man. Go to any game, go to any playoff game, and sit in the nosebleeds. You're gonna get some characters. Yeah, that's it. Because no, nah, it's oh, man. so yeah, funny. You're, you're making a yeah, you're making a good point actually because. I don't know, you know, because n- now we have more access to mm-hmm. w- more access and more of the ability to document, you know, yeah. or, or to, yeah, to document things. So, so I feel like really the, the, the people, the anymore. people that are closer, it's not really to watch a game. It's more so to be seen, I guess. Yeah. Where I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And then I, those Utah fans are crazy, dude. Sacramento fans, early 2000s, crazy. But, uh, yeah, it's a different vibe. Yeah, yeah, maybe more so bought out because NBA is so much more of a, you know, more of a mainstream worldwide sport. I'm, yeah, not, saying it wasn't corp- yeah, I'm not saying it wasn't corporate back then. Of course it was corporate back then. But just, it, it, felt, yeah. it felt like fandom, a college Fandom was a little different, yeah. It felt yes. like, yeah. You, you, I mean, for that Indiana series, you had Purdue University marching band in the streets yeah. of... Like, I know where that street is. Right outside yeah. Market Square and freaking in, you know, downtown Indianapolis. <clears throat> you don't yeah. see that anymore for the NBA. And I don't know why. I don't know why. When, when did the sen- mentality change? Because it's always been college dominant, right? Always. Yes. In, in the Midwest, it's, it's pretty. Indiana is IU, Butler, and Purdue. You know, like top three. The Pacers don't even rank in that. The Indy 500 probably ranks. A little higher, <laughs> you know, but geez, I forgot about that. Indy 500, yeah, Indy 500. It's a bucket list thing of mine. I gotta go one day. Um, yeah, and just speaking oh, of fandom, we might want to touch on it a little bit. I did not sure. know that it was from pizza. <laughs> what? Oh, poisoning. yeah, it was, a, it was a pizza delivery. It was the story is just so strange and ironic, so and that's strange. why it's easy to, to come up with other <clears throat> to come up with other theories or other, you know, of. of how that actually happened, you know, even Jalen Rose, he said, no, he wasn't, he didn't have food poisoning. He was just hung over, you know, but th- no, it, it's just a strange story because everyone ate, but jo- you know, Jordan gets deep into it in that one uh, shoot documentary. I think I gave it to you. And no, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the shoe uh, book. book, that book, the yeah. Uh, biography yeah, kind of book. But yeah, I think because Jordan didn't what, have, what did he, how, how more, how deeply did he get into it? Uh, as, as much as the, as much as the last dance. Okay. Yeah, they went step by step. But you know what's um, funny? I was eating pizza what? as as we were watching. <laughs> That's hilarious. Me and my friend we had ordered some pizza and it's just like ah. And I got, you know also and funny? I got another slice. What's also funny is you, you know how there's like a movie that's based on a book, and then you got those nerds that are like, yeah, well, I read the book first. I, I've never I've never done that with any movie, any show ever. But for whatever reason, I read every Michael Jordan book, and that's and I feel like such a snob. Because we'll talk about something, and you're like, "Did you know that already?" And I'll say, "Yeah, because this book." <laughs> no, that's good. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, the, you know, the first, oh, the, my first basketball irony. book, my first sports-related book slash piece, or anything literature to do with sports, 
was a Michael Jordan doc. Was a Michael Jordan biography. Oh, geez, dude. Led very followed I, very quickly by uh, Kobe Bryant autobiography. Followed very yeah. quickly by Sports Almanacs and um, NBA used to have this thing called Read to Achieve, and I bought a ton of those books where it's just like a oh, bunch yeah. of yeah, just like posters, and that's how I knew about <clears throat> players like Nowitzki or yeah uh, michael red who at one point was a really really good player um dude yeah. i read i read so many i read so many michael jordan books the, the very first book i ever read was called playing for keeps by this author named D- david halberstam something like that Ooh. i swear dude it was like 600 pages 500 pages and i still don't know what that book is about about but i read it <laughs> it's a little different reading a book you know reading a book and yeah because you know, it gives you because you obviously can go back and watch it, right? You you have that lens yeah. now. But when we were kids, I you know I didn't have. I grew up primarily without the internet, you know. So mostly yeah. most most of the NBA action I got was me praying that UBC back home would like put on the NBA, and there was this one year drought where no basketball was put on. I hated I hated yeah. Thailand a lot. <laughs> In ninth yeah. grade, I, I or seventh grade, I hated it. I hated it a lot. Thankfully, yeah, but I mean, but to later catch on, on, dude. Later no, on, for no. your uh, at the time of your high school graduation or whatnot, your parents had that nice Good. internet. Had that nice internet, and what what a lot a lot of people don't realize the sports viewing experience as far as uh, packages or whatnot, or like league pass, right? NBA league pass, actually yeah. a lot better. It's actually a lot better overseas. Oh, really? You know why? It's because they don't have any blackout games. No blackout games. Oh, yeah. No corporate commercials. None. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that? And you watching that uh, Warriors, when the Warriors were going at it, when you came from my graduation, it would have been the... With, with, the, and the, with the Thunder? Spurs. Yeah. When it went to timeout, it didn't go to, it didn't go to commercial. You just saw, like, the players. It just was like... Yeah. 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 You, you, they're just kind of... Warm. Your, yeah, uh, balls it's just dribbling. So, you, can hear, you just hear the fan. yeah. It's so much better. Oh my it's god! It's so yeah. Pu- yeah, balls dribbling. You hear. It's like you're at the actual game. You see shoot around. If you tune it's in so, early yeah, to the game, so you weird. see shoot yeah, around. It's so real. You but, don't but, but, but see that this, in league pass here. Yeah, in, in the states over here, we we, we got to watch. Uh, like Dude, I tried it. Out. I tried it out. I tried league yeah. pass out for a little bit in college, like U.S. version, to see. Hey, man, if I'm in the U.S., that means the that means the service package has got to be a whole lot better, right? No. If you buy the no. U.S. service package, every major television, you know, major nationally televised game is blacked out. Yeah. So <laughs> why, the, why the hell did you buy the service? Why the fuck yeah. would I buy the service if, like... Ooh, James, if, I, I, I can feel... I feel you fuming right now. Oh, man. Dude, this is... I'm, I'm sorry, Give it but this is years... No, I want to hear it. Give it to me. I want to hear it. This is years of frustration with... How things are televised in the United States, just like The Last Dance, riddled with commercial breaks. Whereas my dad and my yeah. my mom and my sister, they're watching back home Netflix Thailand. Everything yeah. back to back, no commercials, two episodes. Mm. What the fuck? How do other countries? <laughs> how do other countries have better viewing experiences than the one the one country that provides the entertainment? I guess they gotta it's make the, their money somehow. You know, they it's gotta the make the monies, their, man. It's the monies. Yeah, but like, yeah. So no, but on top of that, you would think if I buy, if I spend $130, $100 on mm-hmm. your service, I should be able to watch any game, any game when it airs. Yes. Don't give me this blackout fucking bullshit, you know? It's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or yeah, or maybe after the game, you can still stream it, you know? But yeah, yeah blackout. Oh, jeez. I, I get mad. I get mad, man, because, yeah. but, but, the, but the, I guess the biggest plus side to watching sports in America, and is, this was... Yeah, I remember the first time I saw the finals in the States or the playoffs in the States for the first time. It felt good to watch it at night. It felt yeah. good that I didn't have to wake up on a weekend <laughs> and like yeah. go, go, you know, right. go to my friends, go to school in the yeah. morning and not know the score and say, hey, hey you be, shut the fuck up. You put the uh, phone don't, away shit. Don't talk about it. Don't talk <laughs> about it. Don't tell me. Yeah, don't tell me. Anyway, um, we arrive at the creme de la creme, I think, oh. of, the, okay. of the doc, which was when they win it. And it's just that yes. footage of them in the... It's two instances of them celebrating their championship, obviously. Well, first off, in the lead-up to that, mm-hmm. that might be the greatest one minute, one minute and a half of basketball ever played by anybody. Oh, I was screaming. I was screaming at the, at the TV because... It, it, yeah, yeah, that is true. Are, are you talk, you're talking... He scores a layup, steals the ball. 
takes the lead. Just because yeah. they were they were they were on pins and needles at that point in time. They they could have gone easily to game seven, you know. Yeah. I Scottie think, Pippen you know, was in there as a decoy. Like he he didn't he literally was just there everything. as a as a human prop because he, he couldn't move he couldn't like move, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like the way it, and people use this as an example to point out why LeBron is so great. But, you know, with Jordan, it was just like the dude executed so perfectly. You know, yeah. you just saw years in that one minute and a half. You saw basketball mm-hmm. perfection. Like if you're looking at how a guy overcomes odds, that right there. Because yes, Utah was very absolutely. good defensively, very good offensively. He countered them on both ends, both ends. And he executed on both. And, you know, the last shot is just the last shot. No. Yeah, it's, it's, um, oh my God. Yeah, he literally, they were down by three, down by three. He makes a layup because they're, you know, I, I would assume the teams are defending the three more so in a situation like that with, with that little time. You know, this isn't the Warriors that can score threes whenever they want. So, yeah. so that layup was a little easy for him. Yeah. And Dude, just within gets, that minute and a half. Gets the steal. Yeah. Yep. Gets the steal, strips, and you, from a certain angle, it looks like a foul, but no, he got the ball clean. Malone yeah. doesn't even know that he's there. Boom. Strix, it goes down the stretch. Yeah. You know, it's just... Because he knew, he knew that he mentions this in the, the Jordan to the Max. He knew that, you know, like the, the, beginning, the beginning parts of every play for the Jazz is Dennis Rodman and Karl Malone kind of wrestling each other underneath the basket, you know? Yep. So, and so, so like Michael a, they, they canceled that, each other out at that point. Yeah, so, so Michael knew that um, Karl Malone is more concerned about having to deal with Dennis Rodman and getting his arms free than to... Mm-hmm. Then somebody like Michael Jordan coming out, you know, take a gamble and picking him. Poor Byron Russell. <laughs> Poor Brian Russell, dude. Poor he Brian was, Russell. I mean, he was the main to, to guard him, but oh man, when Jordan was kind of clowning him, he was like, oh, Brian Russell. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. They were a team with championship pedigree, you know, the same thing with the Pacers. It's just like, but it's that little bit of championship DNA that kind of propels oh, geez, yeah. certain that, teams yeah, the experience above the rest. and the, yeah. yeah. That's part of one of my hot fire. I got three for you. Um, but no, sure. the creme de la creme for me of this doc was of the. Yeah, it's been leading up. This is the final episode, right? Yeah. Right after they win, in the in the locker room, just how elated they are, right? Just like you know, freaking Jordan pouring champagne onto Dennis's head. You know, that's one yeah, yeah. of color right there. But the best best footage, I think, mm-hmm. was him on that piano in the hotel, with just the. Just a bunch of people <laughs> just like yeah. just going at it. Just I, I I think that's the happiest I've seen him ever. Yeah. You know? Perhaps, yeah. You know. So good. It's so good because that's that's the stuff you think about when they say, Oh, this this crew got unfiltered asset access. Yeah. Yeah, you you, you want to see things like that, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like him talking about, you know, savoring the moment. People keep asking him, hey, you're going to come back this year. Are you going to come back this year? And he's like, y'all, chill the fuck out. You Just, just let me Yeah, let me can enjoy we enjoy for now? You know? And it's just like... They always want to know. See, and that's another burden of being a champion. Because when you... If you're a fighter, mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're a, you know, an athlete for a you know, traditional sport, once you yeah. win, once you're at the top, you know how frustrating that... First of all, it's impossibly difficult to do it anyways to win a championship <clears throat> the next thing while you're celebrating the questions are oh well, what next year it's like hey whoa 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 <laughs> did you yeah. not see what we just did you know you know and he he sort of took phil's kind of zen buddhism kind of philosophy like hey, hey, hey you know let, let me let me savor this moment yes you know and that was the first time i think i saw jordan just like ah. you know because he had yeah. emotional responses before we've seen him cry We've yes. seen him on the floor, balls, just like relieved, elated. But yeah. that's like that sixth one was just him, just because that. I mean, that could have been. It. You could say that was his most, the most difficult route as far as becoming a champion. Probably, probably. You could um, say that. Is, you know, it's, it's arguable. Yeah. And a lot of people pick that as being his best season, not his physical best, but his like overall. Uh, kind of like how they'll t- they'll say LeBron James's best was that 2016 comeback, you know, just his whole entire philosophy channeled into this one ye- season and one struggle, you know, yeah, overcoming that, you know. Um, another thing that I liked, uh, small little thing, was just the finality of it, the finality of 
this episode, you know, Phil Jackson had that thing where, you know, they, they were pegging him, you know, they were asking, oh, are you going to come back? And he ultimately mm-hmm. pulled the plug on it. You know, it's revealed that he chose not to come back. And that yeah, he's, he's the bad guy the whole <laughs> It wasn't Jerry Krause. It was Phil Jackson. Skip gotcha. Bayless sort of calls him the, uh, the ultimate spinner. You know, he, he kind of oh, takes, takes it off. But, um, Phil Jackson. Dude, Phil Jackson is a genius, dude. If you can have Michael Jordan, you know, like, if you can manipulate the great Michael Jordan, you're, you're, you're the greatest coach of all time. This dude had, a, had everybody played. He had this had planned already. Michael Jordan didn't name it the last, uh, the, the playbook, you know, at the beginning the of the season. Michael playbook. Jordan didn't name it the last dance. Phil Jackson named it the last dance, you know? Yeah. And um, it's just... I like the finality of it in that, you know, they, they, <clears throat> they talk about them taking that playbook or whatever, or writing, have the players write what they love yeah. about or had thought about the season or whatnot, write about it, and then burn it. Yeah. That's a very kind of Phil Jackson. That's is that has to be the most Phil Jackson thing you can think of. It's so, dude, you know? it's so corny, but it's so good. Like, it's, it's like, so- it's, 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 cor- it's like. Yeah, well, when I say corny, I'm like I'm like embarrassed to admit that that's such a great idea. <laughs> supposedly, <laughs> you know? supposedly Michael wrote a poem. Like he wrote a poem. On, he wrote a poem. Michael Jordan wrote a poem. Michael Jordan wrote a you know? poem. <laughs> you know? But I also like in the last thing about the finality. I thought that Jerry uh, Krause was kind of brought back to the light a little bit because you did see Scottie Pippen say, "You know, I had the greatest coach. I had the greatest player to ever yeah. play." And I had the greatest GM. Yeah. You know, Kraus, and you just see, like, they, they sort of ended, um, they gave him a pretty good spotlight of him just being happy for once, you know? Yeah. And then Jordan or Phil Jackson just giving him credit in that announcement. I know, like, dude, and that's, yeah. that's the major problem I had with the first two or first The first two, two episodes, like, they let him have it. They let him have it, man. It was just, like, this, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to cry for this dude, you know? Yeah, the dude's dead, but you know, now it's like, okay. Let go of it now. You know, Jordan, yeah. he still feels a certain way about not being able to lose. <laughs> it probably drives him more insane because there's no, like, what if, what yeah. if, what if, what not. But no. All right. Well, um, we're at the 45-minute mark. Uh, before Close we enough, go yeah. into three just interesting hot fire or just our conversation oh, yeah. or q and I just want to say to the people listening, thank you for listening so far. Um, like in the announcement uh, before the podcast, I just want to reiterate that the best way to contribute to this podcast would be to send me a voice message at anchor.fm slash james dash That's anchor.fm slash james dash That's K-I-T-T-I-P-O-L slash message. Um, and so next week, just a little bit of announcement. Yeah, we're... Maybe going to take a break from this specific segment. I will have on uh, another pro athlete. Uh, I'm not naming names just yet, but he is your friend. So if you are a subscriber at this point, stay in tune for that. Um, and so with that, Eric, we come Dude. to... Dude. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I was going to touch on two things real quick. What's up? Uh, yeah, they, they'll be quick. One of them is, is and I just thought of... Dude, when I heard you... Uh, starting your your bit that you just did about supporting the podcast or whatnot i thought you were like if you don't want to support the podcast you can go ahead and send and i was like oh dude please tell him to send money (laughs) well it is in the um, yeah tell them to send some money (laughs) you gotta rack up you gotta give them a reason though it's not like just i'm kidding i'm I'm kidding it's my greedy brain thinking but uh another thing i wanted to point out which i thought was very very impressive and it just like because um, Michael Jordan, okay, Michael Jordan said six out of eight, right? And and I, I want to get to that because when we talk about, let's say, I'm just gonna give an, let's say we talk about uh, LeBron James, who mm-hmm. is, you'd say, what is he? Three, let's say, how many times did he go to the finals? Nine times. Yeah. He's eight three. Speed. He's three for nine he's in the finals, right? He's three for six. Three for. S- Six? Three of nine would make him twelve straight trips, man. Yeah, three of six. He's three of six. In the oh yeah, sorry. He's he's yeah. no no. Well, well, three out of nine. Three out of nine times. Out of the nine times he's been, he's won three, right? Yes. Okay, as far as going to the finals, and I remember Mike. That's just going into the finals. The nine is the times in the finals, not by year. And I remember mm-hmm. Michael Jordan said in the documentary, he said, "Yeah, we won 
six out of eight. And those aren't times in the finals. Those are just by years. They won six championships within eight years. And I thought that was so impressive to hear that because mm-hmm. when we think about, um, when you think about that, yeah, like that's crazy. Like in that, in that span, it's not how many times in the finals it's, it's by year. Anyways, yeah. I don't know. No, maybe, that's a maybe good segue. It, it, that's, that's I an just interesting think it's, segue. It's just so impressive. It's so impressive to say it like that, you yeah. know, because if, if you if you talk about the years, I'm only bringing up LeBron James. I don't know, whatever. I feel like he's the the right person to compare to. No, he is the right person to compare it to. But if, but if you want to talk about the three championships, like how many years between were those championships? You know, it was, two. let's say, what out of I don't know, five years, six years. Yeah. But it was just it was just impressive that Jordan said six out of eight, six out of eight finals. That's six championships within eight years. It's crazy. Yeah, in the modern oh, yeah. era, it's pretty crazy. No, that, it's a pretty good segue into this first question that I have. Yes. You know, we talk about teams with um, borderline championship pedigree. Teams that, like the Pacers or like the Jazz, were just almost there. They were so yes. close. But because of yes. that little bit of extra DNA strand of championship DNA, didn't they just fell down. The, they, they didn't. They didn't get end up getting over the hump. What other teams reminded you of that? Um, great teams that just didn't have that extra ump, in your opinion. Oh, great teams that didn't have that For extra me, ump. there's one prime example that I can think of in the modern day. In the modern day, it, 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 is it the Clippers for you? No, it's the Houston Rockets. Houston Rockets? As, I mean, when? Which Houston Rockets? What, remember what, that what time? 2018 year, Chris Paul gets injured. Oh, uh, yeah. That team might have actually... It's wild to think. But they might have actually been better, a better team that year. They had yeah. the record. They had first seed. They had the MVP and James Harden. But, it, you know, matchup-wise, you would always take the Warriors over them, right? But it Did was they, just, w- w- Were they swept? No. No. It went to seven. Oh, that's right. They were ahead. Seven, opposite of a sweep. That's the only time that they were ahead. Yeah, was that one game, uh, and it's just like as they far just could as not far as get any, over the yeah. hump. As far as any singular team, I can't think of one by year, but I remember there was a time. I think it was you know early 2010s. The Clippers mm-hmm. were. I was just like, that's it. They're they're going to be a problem every single year, and the Warriors didn't get over them either. That was that was pre championship Warriors. Yeah, the Warriors I the, got I thought over the Clippers. Were that team? You thought the you, when you say that Clippers, are you saying the Lob City kind of Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan, Blake Griffin Clippers? Yes, yes. Ah, with with Doc but, Rivers at the helm, right? Just like complete package. Yeah, we, Jamal we, Crawford we, we coming Doc, off Doc the bench. Coach. Jamal Crawford coming off the bench for you. Jamal Crawford Glenn is Big the Baby most dangerous Davis scorer ever. Yeah, Darren Collison just right there. Yeah, just like yeah, no, no. I thought I had the same train of thought as you. I thought that there's no way the Warriors can. Pete was just because they, they're so dominant inside and like, yeah, it Ooh, was also puzzling the, to me uh, that they were this beating is so, them. This is so random, but I think I think it was the 2002 49ers. <laughs> How so? I'm just so pissed off about that season. No, they, they just had the, their, their team was so good. The 2000, yeah, 2002 49ers, I believe. Jeff Garcia, Terrell Owens. Did they play the Ravens. First. They no 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 they, they didn't even make the they got knocked out of the first round I was so pissed they they were knocked out of the first round by Packers yeah. they went twelve and four that year and they easily could have gone fourteen and two looking at the yeah. two games that they there were two games that they lost that they could have easily won. But they went twelve and four should have gone four first round yeah. of the playoffs I thought that was a championship team but yeah well what's a championship That's- team that isn't talked about as much in my opinion is that Mavericks team that beat LeBron it's because like. Oh, that dude. team was that Not series that. was so good, dude. People don't know each game was decided by two or three points. That's it. Yeah. That whole that whole series. Not only did he beat LeBron James in the finals, but I think in the first or second round he eliminated Kobe Bryant after their yeah. W- and when they were going for what would have been their third championship in a row, yeah. Just you know, and it you know when they talk about that D- championship DNA, you can it's. Almost undescribable because so in the pantheon of athletes that have, you know, performed and come and go, come and gone, yeah. there aren't that many of them that have that. There aren't that many that have like that extra little thing that allows them to convert and become yeah. and become champions. You know, you can you can see it. 
the Warriors had it for a little bit. Who knows? Dude, dude the, the, the Warriors, it, I, even though Steph Curry is a, is a superstar, I, I, the thing about the Warriors, first of all, he's never won a Finals MVP, so it's no, it's not just Steph Curry. But He should have won that first one. I don't know why they yeah. gave it to Andre Iguodala, man. Yeah, that's just them more, more magnifying like LeBron's greatness, you know, by giving it to Iguodala because he had to go. It would have made more sense to give, to give it to LeBron, all things considered, instead of not to take anything away from Andre. He's an all-time yeah. great. He's a Hall of Famer. I, I, I'd give him a Hall of Famer, you know. It's just, yeah, but it's, you know, I don't know. They, they don't really do that. I mean, the only one person has won finals MVP in a losing effort was Jerry West. Yeah. Um, switching to another one. Um, another question. Oh, yes, please. We're going to end oh, on I'll, a UFC I'll, question, though. Cause no, I, I, I was going to say, I, I, I have one for you. But <laughs> also, uh, just to go back quickly about the Warriors, you, you say the, like, the, that championship, that little that little bit that you need to reach that championship level is not the thing about the warriors. It it, it wasn't a, or at least the 2015 Warriors. it wasn't a a superstar. It was just, I think it was like from unselfishness, you know, and actual team basketball. Like it was amazing. Huh? Like the Spurs. They had great teamwork. Like the Spurs. Yeah. Really good defensively. Those those teams win. Yeah. And the damn, the, the damn Raptors dude that beat the warriors. God. I mean, they were good teams. No, no, I mean they're obviously a, a, a bigger star within that team, but it's not. That wasn't the reason why. Um, yeah. Here, my, my my question is: What's up? If do you think? Because th- there's the debates all the time. There's always going to be debates. Who is the greatest of all time? It's kind of pointless, but whatever. If it gives, if it gives ESPN something to talk about, good for them. But if Michael Jordan stayed retired in his second retirement. After that last shot against mm-hmm. the Jazz, after six championships, that was his last game. Would you think, do you think the gap would be even wider? Like he would be even more just the undisputed, no greatest of all time? Um, you mean if he had never come back to play for the Wizards, right? Yeah, dude. Because I look, honestly, so. it was cool to watch Michael Jordan play, but damn it, dude. I, I still, I kind of erased that from. I think most people do. Most people don't. I, I don't think it would have I don't think it would have made the gap any much bigger because nah. that's just it's just like it kind of goes back to what you said last week about how hard it is for someone to go out on top you know like but I don't think anybody holds that against him at all if anything people congratulate him for it and if anything him yeah, going back you to could the say Wizards that you makes him, you you can narrate it you can narrate it for the love of the game type thing but I just man dude Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time and. But I just think if he just stayed retired, there would be a little more mystique, and the art, there there would be yeah. no argument. Yeah, no leave <clears throat> no stone unturned though. But yeah, um, kind of my spiel on the matter because he, it's my Jordan, you know. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna do what he's gonna want. He's gonna do, but it kind of I think what would have maybe made it a little more is if he'd have just said, "Okay, Phil's not here anymore." Screw this. I'm going to go. I'm going to go where I want to go. Let me go to New York. He was going to go to New York. Was he? Yeah. He he would have. um, If let's say, I mean, he already kind of planned on retiring anyways, but let's say if he had to come back Mm -hmm. for one more year, he wanted to play for New York. That, that sends. I get goosebumps thinking of that. It's just because he's, can you imagine? That would have, that would have, that right there would have made the gap even greater because, um, Okay, so he led his own team. If he goes at the edge of his career, goes to another team, a storied franchise at that time, like New York. Yeah. Not, 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 not the New York that we know today, but the New York at that time. It just would have yeah. been insane. insane. Dude, the, um, the, the Knicks, dude, the Knicks made the, went to the finals the year after. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, you know, after the 98 Bulls, the Knicks went to the finals the year after and without Patrick Ewing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe doable. They, and they they got to get they got to get free wall though because they they're, they're yeah. not going to play together. Anyways, yeah, I'm sorry. You, you got no, one more. Okay. I have one and a half more. Um, sure. How would you feel if the NBA went to single elimination just for this one playoffs? Just for oh. just to set the record straight, just to get us into the off season so that they they're not mm. pressured to come back. You know, it's kind of like almost like <clears throat> yeah. the UFC type. 
test every single player. All right, you got one shot. It'll be like March Madness. One yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like the the top eight seeds for both conferences yeah. going at it. I don't, I don't see in the current, I don't see in the current climate how you can have a seven game kind of series, seven game no, best yeah. of seven. It's just um, impossible. I, I think selfishly from a fan point of view, yeah, um, that would be amazing. That would be, but amazing. but it would be, but it, it will forever be an asterisk to that championship team because you're going to name them NBA champions, but. We know that it was a single elimination game. There's not, there's not proper game planning and adjusting. You know, yeah, how you it's play not, a, it's not quite the boxing match, but it is like in a way it would kind of be even more special in a single. Yeah, like, it, in a, it could in a be because this would be fine. Yeah, but but you still can't. There's, Every game's there's a game that seven. asterisk, like I said, where that's not a that's not an NBA champ. Yeah. It would be cool. It would be exciting. Maybe if every they game, game something else. Every game is a game seven. Oh, that'll be yeah. That'll be and amazing, upsets on all the selfishly. upsets of things happen again. You know, and especially now, these players are healed. These players are training. They're they're good. You know, they feel good. They're yeah. they're there's no soreness or whatnot. For, you know, or like uh, season fatigue. Yeah, that'll be amazing. But you can't call it an NBA champion. You got to call it something else. You got to make up some name for it. the the. The State Farm champion because State Farm is one of the NBA's sponsors. I don't know. <laughs> I get so I get so sick of those. Uh, yeah, but ugh. oh yeah, but yeah. Whatever. It's reported. It, and the only reason I ask is because it's reported that Woj and you know Marcus they they reported that it was a kind of All Star conference call between Chris Paul, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Giannis, all these mm. other players, uh, and they came out and they said they wanted to play. So we could see something like this happen. We could see... I mean, that'd be cool. that would be cool. Selfishly, from a, uh, a fan standpoint, yeah, that would be amazing. I just think the precedent... The only thing that's really stopping them right now isn't really the health part of it. It's it's more... It is. It both is and isn't. But the yeah. major thing is they don't want the bad outlook slash press of we're hogging all these tests for ourselves, you know? Yeah. Let, yeah. let, let the UFC do that. I like watching them better anyway. <laughs> and oh, speaking. Okay, last last question. Oh no, I was always gonna say. I I, I always thing really quick. I always mention this. I'll I'll keep mentioning it until it happens. Uh, another reason why I secretly want the NBA season to be done with this one is because the Warriors' streak of going to the finals is still intact. Oh, Eric, <laughs> it's still intact. If the Warriors go to the finals next season, uh, then that means they've been in the finals for however many, however many consecutive seasons. You know, yeah. you, you can't count the Warriors out this year, you know, because if they win every every game up to 82 games, you know, they, they could have made the playoffs. <laughs> you sound just right, like your go. dad. You sounded just like your Dude, dad at that point. I know? was. Oh, they can yeah, make the exactly, playoffs. That's exactly what I was thinking. My, my dad's hardcore. He watches them all. The, he's watching them all the time, no matter what. He's crazy. But yeah. There, man. All right. So what do you got, question. dude? You're, 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 just uh, watching the UFC fight night the other night. Um. Oh yeah. What can you tell me about Kevin Randleman? I know this is a random question, but Kevin Randleman, who? Yeah, this Kevin guy Randleman. Insane. He was. He was in the. He was the. I'm sorry. This guy looked insane. Dude. Oh yeah, he was insane. Probably because he took all the steroids. But he was. Um. He was a fighter back in the. It was early UFC. He fought in Pride. He was kind of that. He was. He was that guy. Also, you mentioned like not quite championship caliber, but always there, always in contention. Always mm. in the mix and the talks of, but never in the big fights. He's he's had a few big wins. That dude was jacked. He was um he was known for his wrestling. A great wrestler, uh, crappy stand up, very fast starter, very aggressive. But uh, and and he died. He actually died very young. Uh, yeah. I want to say maybe before he turned forty. I don't know how long ago he died. Maybe within within the last five to ten years, I believe, is when he passed away. He died young. That's kind of yeah. random though. But yeah, how, how no, do you, it's well, random. You I know it's random, Randleman? but. I, he's just he. I think he was being inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's just like um, they showed footage of him take picking up Fedor, racking him he, on his head, dude. Like, oh yeah, oh dude, what? he dude. I thought that like, everyone thought Fedor him. died when that yeah. happened. <laughs> that would but, kill uh, you. He he picked up Fedor literally, full strength, full speed on the back of his like neck. Boom. That would kill anyone, and then Fedor. Anyone somehow figures it out, gets his wits back, and then wins via arm bar. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Randleman, he's had his biggest wins. I, I think his biggest win, he knocked out uh, Miracle That was a huge surprise. Oh, yeah. I, I but, they showed yeah. that in his highlight reel. It's just a final, you know, UFC-related kind of 
question that it's, it's kind of weak if I'm being honest, but it's kind of like, you know, I, I've always wanted to get at the history of things a little more and you have. More yeah, he, he was, yeah, he was the early. Because you don't, know, I want Kevin to, Randleman. You know, the Kevin heavyweight Randleman division, shot out man. Over here and there. I'm Heavy, sorry? It's just the heavyweight division, I think, just need that ump. They, they, they oh, yeah, that. you know, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you brought this up because I, what the what the hell is Stipe gonna do? He needs to he needs to uh now, now I'm starting to get a little because he needs to as Tony Everyone's Ferguson getting annoyed man as as far as as Tony Ferguson would say uh defender vacate man you know Daniel Cormier is ready he's ready for his title show. he's gonna retire after this fight and you, you gotta stop happen. you gotta stop pulling at people's heartstrings by you know by because he's a you know he's a firefighter but also like come on dude you you have an obligation as a UFC heavyweight champion. Yeah. Like, stop. Don't use that as an excuse. Freaking, um, Bravo had this fire kind of take on what if the next time the Beeb and Gaethje fight, Tony and Connor are in are the co main? Oh, yeah. That would be, a, I mean, look, that would be that would amazing. Break. But also, uh, from, a Uf, from UFC, f- from a business standpoint, they can't do that because they're going to sell millions of pay-per-view buys pay-per-view buys no matter what and they they're going to get that million if they separate them into two different um events instead of putting them into one you know yeah, we've seen stranger things happen yeah we've seen stranger things happen but that would be wild well we're at the one hour and two minutes mark <laughs> Uh, hey, hey dude, we met our goal. We met our goal, though. Hey, it's fine. We're, it's we're, fine. we're getting a little better, you know? Under two hours, dude. We did it. We did it, 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 it is pretty good. Progress. <laughs> All right, Progress. y'all. Uh, that's going to be in a, that's gonna be the end of Crunchy Take uh, for this week. We are... I think the plan is to maybe take a week off of this specific segment and maybe come reframe um, our... Uh, revisit our bearings a little bit after we get a little more real-life sports news under our pocket or not or whenever the next fight night if it happens to be really good we'll maybe try to make yeah. a segment out of it or Eric, we, just, have, we, we, we could talk we could talk about anything but yeah that's you have that. anything else to add eric before we uh no man we're, we're we're not famous enough to have uh to have sponsors uh our instagram profiles are not i like how you keep to, saying to, that to but matter. i'm i'm like a click away at this point from getting a sponsored segment it's in the works so yeah. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, but you yeah, didn't know uh, that, good though. for you. Congratulations. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and uh, just one more shout out to Tom. Thank you, Tom, for listening. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for everyone else for listening, too. I really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, and take care until the next Crunchy Take. See y'all. Till the next Crunchy Take.